Hello, I'm Danielle Patterson with Gene Codes Corporation. Today I'll be showing you how to use Sequencer for initial quality analysis and control of your raw sequence data. These methods can be used to quickly and often dramatically increase the quality of your data and thus the results of any downstream analysis. Now it's important to remember as I move through the tutorials on sequence quality that the steps I'm showing you are not necessarily illustrative of the data assessment needed on a sequence-by-sequence -sequence or project-by-project -project basis. We've designed Sequencer to be a highly customizable and powerful program, meaning it's robust enough to import thousands of sequences and align them in a short amount of time, and it's also refined enough that you can customize the program to your own user preferences and specifications. It's also important as I move through this to point out that the order by which I chose to illustrate the important features of data quality is in no way a set protocol. Often sequence trims are performed without even previewing the sequence data. So Sequencer was designed to make the customized analysis needed for your particular project easy. And these tutorials were designed to give an introduction into how to utilize Sequencer to interface with the information contained within your sequence files. So during this brief introduction, as you can see, I was able to import, trim, align, review, and edit some of the sequence data I'm going to be discussing in further detail during these tutorials. I'd like to go ahead and begin now. What I've done is open a new project window within Sequencer. I'm going to import a folder of sequences. Now this folder contains simply ABI files which works for our purposes today. These are real raw sequence reads from an old research project of my own in which I was attempting to compile a 16S library. So we've imported 33 ABI sequence files. These files contain the actual trace data for each base call as well as the quality score for each nucleotide in your sequence. Right away, we can tell a lot within this project overview screen. We can see that we have an average length of sequence of about a thousand base pairs, and an average quality score within these data of about 70 to 75 percent. Also, we can see that we have failed sequence attempts. Whether these were old controls, I would have to refer to my well plate notes to be sure. For any further downstream purposes, as far as quality improvement. Five base pairs is just not going to suit our needs. All right, now that I've gotten rid of any of the sequence files imported that I cannot use for any further analysis, I like to try to get general gist for the quality of data within the sequence files. You go ahead and click on any of the sequences in that project overview screen. It's going to pull up the sequence. This nice blue motif is going to correspond directly to the quality scores for each individual nucleotide. To get a better breakdown, you can open up your user preferences pane and select that confidence range. As you see here, the lowest confidence, meaning on a FRED index scale of 1 to 60, it would be anywhere from 0 to 20. That's going to be corresponding to the darker blue. And for the highest quality nucleotides, they're going to be that lighter blue, and they're going to correspond on a FRED scale of anywhere from 40 until 60. Again, Sequencer gives you options. If you have more stringent quality parameters for your experiment, you can always customize these ranges to suit your individual needs. Either way, graphically speaking, it's very handy for me to be able to visualize it. The other thing I can tell just by pulling this up is this data is pretty consistent with general Sanger style sequencing rates. You see that initial string of poor quality bases followed by this nice region of high quality data I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now I'd like to move into utilizing your chromatogram in order to improve the quality of your downstream analysis. Let's start off with getting a quick idea of what a high quality versus low quality trace looks like. I'll highlight a region of high quality nucleotides and we'll get an idea of what a clear trace looks like. Here we see that we have very nice, evenly spaced peaks corresponding to your nucleotide calls. We'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of this so we can get an idea of what a poor quality trace would look like. 
As we see here, your base calls tends to be less accurate, more poorly spaced up here, and your peaks tend to be a little bit more blobby. We see a loss of resolution, no clear spacing, and it's very hard to read. This is data that we're gonna go ahead and remove during trimming. The reason for this is so that you can identify anomalies within good sequence data and correct base calling error. As we can see within this sequence, we have some good quality data with about seven low quality base calls within it. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the region, open that chromatogram, and we'll amplify this uh, length of nucleotides to get a better idea of what's going on here. As we can see, we have a very large G peak, which resulted in an erroneous uh, call to the next five prime position. This is a very clear T peak. On occasion, this happens. Sequencer allows you to make edits to your sequence quite easily. Since this is such a clear T peak, I'm gonna go ahead and very simply highlight that cleotide position, type in a T, and move to my next edit if there's any that need to be made. As I said, this is a length of about seven nucleotides with a poor quality score. And I'm looking at these peaks and they all look like very decent calls from there. If at any point during this editing process you feel like you've made any erroneous edits, Sequencer makes it very easy to revert to your experimental data. Notice that all the experimental or raw nucleotide sequences on the underlying position, you can highlight it, go to your sequence menu, and simply hit revert to experimental data. As I've made all the edits I'd like to make here, I'm going to go ahead and X out. That is a good way that you can use your chromatogram or raw trace information to improve the quality of your raw sequence data. Now I'd like to move into trimming within Sequencer. As with a lot of the data quality features within the program, you have a lot of choices. From the project overview screen, you can select all of your sequences. Remember if you have a reference sequence and it's designated as such, you'll always be protected. Sequencer won't make any alterations to your reference sequence, so you don't have to worry about truncating it. Under the sequence menu, you have multiple options here. You can always trim your ends without preview. We do have a set of default trim parameters that are in place and for a wide range of purposes, it does work great. You'll notice here that we have an average quality score of about 70 to 75%. If I do trim ends without preview, immediately we notice I have an increase in quality of about 20%. Again, you never have to worry about losing your experimental data within the program. If all the sequences are highlighted, I simply have to hit revert to experimental data. Back to my original data set. So I'll go ahead and open my trim ends menu, and this will open up our overview screen. It's always going to tell you pretty clearly what it's proposing to do on each end of the sequence. So in order to view and set your trim criteria, simply hit this button and pull up the ends trimming menu. Notice you have several options from the 5' prime and 3' prime ends. You can choose to trim off ambiguous spaces. You can choose to trim by confidence. And you can always choose to trim X amount of bases from the 5' prime end as well. On the 3' prime end, you can choose to trim based on peak size. And at the bottom, once you trim from both the 5' and 3' prime ends, you can choose to do a post-fix truncation. Also, you have multiple phasing options for your trimming. This can come in handy if you would like to set default trim parameters for a variety of different projects that you have going, or if you're a more conservative trimmer. Now for this project, I'm going to go ahead and leave most default trim parameters in place, simply change the confidence level on the 5' prime end and on the 3' prime end. I'll hit OK. It's going to go ahead and loosen up what's being trimmed off, basically off of the 3' prime end. I'm going to go ahead and hit Trim Checked Items, and there we have what's been trimmed off. I can close, view the greatly increased quality scores. Looking at an average overall quality increase of about 15 to 20 percent. So trimming of your raw sequence data is one of the most important quality control steps that you can take in the pre-processing of your sequencing data. With an average increase in quality scores of around 15 to 25 percent, Taking this one step can greatly improve your chances at successful downstream analysis.